we'll talk about how speakers get damaged. And it's not with a heavy box like this one. It's with air. Coming up. We'll take a look at the science in a moment, but first let's compare them with the undamaged speaker. I'll put the microphone inside the ear cup right now and I'll push down so you will hear the main brain sound getting squashed. You should never ever hear that in your headphones. That's the sound of a dead speaker. Now music. Right, and now undamaged speaker. I think anyone using any playback device will feel the difference. It's a massive difference. So the damaged speaker will have crackling high ends and a little bit of bass going on, but the spectrum will be just destroyed and the volume is also less, while the undamaged speaker is fairly well balanced and the clarity is there, the mids are there, there's no distortion going on, and it's also a little bit louder. You should be able to hear that through whatever a device you're watching uh, this video. I just realized when I was editing the video that I wasn't really clear on how not to use them. So if you have them on your head, please do not squeeze and push them against your ears. You will create uh, the air pressure spikes and will damage the membrane. So if you don't hear that, it's fine. Please don't push just in order to hear it because then you will damage uh, your speakers and you will have to replace them. And the same goes for having them on the flat surface like a table. Have them like that. Don't turn them around because things can happen. People can maybe try and step on them push them down for fun, I don't know. So avoid creating any pressure inside. Also in the backpack, which I have over here, if you have a laptop inside, like I have it in a, this pouch usually, but if you store your headphones into the backpack that way, inside, obviously when you will be walking or if you lean towards something, you may create air pressure spikes inside and destroy the membranes. So just to be perfectly clear, if you don't hear any of that noises right now, don't try to create them because you will damage your membrane. Here is how the squashed membrane uh, looks like. You can see how it's really not even stable anymore. It's pushed out on one side. If I can get that to the camera, I hope I can. Can you see this? Over here, this is the coil and the coil is literally out of the magnet on one side and it's, oh, oh shit. And it's only in on the other side. So it basically works partially. And also you will see that the material of the membrane and the pattern on the membrane is completely squashed and destroyed. So that is what creates all sorts of problems and definitely you cannot trust uh, your mixing decisions to a speaker that looks like that. Now here's the science behind it. 
For illustration purposes, I'll be using this glass over here to push the speaker or the cavity against it, creating a perfect seal. So you'll be able to see in the camera what's happening with the membrane of the speaker. Here's how that happens. The air trapped inside the cavity has absolutely nowhere to go. So here's the speaker, but the ear pad is sealing it off, creating this cavity. And when it's pressed against your ears heavily, quickly, the air has no time to escape through the ear pad and through this velour seal over here. And that creates the air spike that pushes down on the membrane. The membrane is made out of very thin material. Imagine it like a piece of paper. So when it's crumbled like that, obviously, even if you try to fix it, it will never move as it should in a you know, controlled or desired motion. I just got another sheet of paper because I got the idea that I can actually illustrate how harmonics happen. So listen closely how this sheet of paper sounds right now. All right, so that's the membrane, you know, moving the way it was designed to. After it's crashed, several times usually, sounds different, doesn't it? So it's the same motion being applied to the material, but it creates a completely different sound. So it's a linear and harmonical distortion that comes out of destroyed membranes. There are venting holes introduced in many, many headphones to prevent this. Some headphones are super open, so they are designed to have zero issue with that. But there are trade-offs for doing that. Making flat sounding, flat tuned headphones using acoustics alone is very, very tricky. We have to rely on acoustical principles, acoustical elements in the headphone assembly or design uh, to achieve flat frequency response, which means we need to have enough leverage to adjust or correct whatever part that is not super linear. So for example, if the ear pad uh, is uh, a little bit bassy, we need to have a way to control the speaker to get the bass down and vice versa. So the more controlled um, acoustics we have, the better we can tweak the frequency response, even specific bandwidths or specific resonances, we can move them around by designing the acoustic chambers with a closed, uh, with a closed front speaker um, cavity. Not to mention having bass extension even remotely possible, you really cannot use open design, you cannot use big venting holes because the air will just escape and there will be no uh, buildup of the pressure when the bass kicks in. That closed sound chamber is actually one of the reasons why our headphones have such a great bass extension and such a great linearity out of the box. Yes, we can push that forward further with calibration, but even without it, they are flatter than popular headphones using generic software solutions for calibration. Just out of the box. If squashed membrane happens to you, well, in that case, you need to order replacement speakers and exchange them. You can do that at home with basic skills of, you know, electronics and stuff like that. Just using a screwdriver will do the trick. Alternatively, obviously, you can send them into our workshop where we, where we will check every single component and make sure that they are ready to rock and roll once again. Until the next time, stay safe and sound. Bye.